Hey, do you have any plans for your next vacation? How about seeing India? Hold on now. Just because it might feel like it's a world away, both figuratively and literally, that doesn't mean it isn't a tourist-friendly country. And more importantly, a trip to India won't cost you as nearly as much as you'd think. But first, you didn't think I'd talk about India and not mention the majestic Taj Mahal, did you? This famous Indian landmark has been one of the seven wonders of the world for quite some time, and seeing this architectural marvel in person makes it pretty clear why. The construction was commissioned in 1632, and it's believed that it took up to 21 years to complete the entire project. I know you've heard of this monument, but did you know that it's a mausoleum? Yeah, the emperor at the time, Shah Jahan had this marble structure built to house the tomb of his wife, Mumtaz Mahal. Kinda sad she never got to see this ivory masterpiece built just for her. Since we're on the topic, here's a fun fact. There was an infamous Indian con man who repeatedly sold different landmarks in the country, including the Taj Mahal and the Parliament House of India. He was arrested as many as nine times but somehow managed to escape from prison multiple times. During his final escape, he was already 84 years old. Aside from the fact that he was breaking the law, you gotta admit, that's kind of impressive. Anyway, some tourists hope to avoid the crowds at major tourist attractions, like the Taj Mahal, and prefer to take the road less traveled. However, a long time might be hard to come by in India. With around 51 births every minute, that's over 73,000 a day. This country has one of the fastest growing populations in the world. Roughly half of India's population is under the age of 25. Also making it one of the world's youngest populations, India alone holds more people than the entire Western Hemisphere. And with so many people comes a colorful tapestry of cultures, religions, and languages. Which brings me to my next point. There are about 780 languages spoken in India, but some sources put it in the thousands. Whatever the case, only 22 have been recognized as official languages. Good thing English is in the mix too. India has one of the largest numbers of English-speaking people in the world, second only to the US. This means you can enjoy this super diverse country without needing a translation app on your phone each time you want to stop for lunch or buy a souvenir. Oh, that's right, your smartphone is obviously your closest traveling companion because, let's face it, taking pictures is probably the easiest way to document your adventures abroad. You'll be happy to know that cell service and mobile internet is very cheap in India. So there's one more reason why your trip won't cost you nearly as much as you think. You can share every experience and discover with your friends and family back home without breaking your budget. That alone should put this fascinating country at the top of your bucket list of places to visit. Okay, now for another reason India won't leave you with moths flying out of your wallet. The food there is so cheap. Check it out, if you go to a restaurant and order a whole meal with chicken or even fish, your bill could be as little as $1. As for a cup of tea, it'll cost you about 20 cents. I mean, can you imagine filling your belly for under 5 bucks? Sign me up. Given that you'll be saving so much on dining, you can dedicate more of that limited budget to once-in-a-lifetime experiences, something that India offers in abundance. Actually, one of these is the food itself. In case you haven't heard of the land of spices, India produces around 70% of the world's supply. That means each authentic local meal will be an adventure itself. Hopefully your stomach will be strong enough to tackle the rich variety of flavors. And for those of you with sensitive taste buds, here's a pro tip. Take small bites to test the intensity of the spice before biting off more than you can handle. I also have some good news for traveling vegetarians that may be hesitant about the availability of meals suited for your dietary needs. India is also well known for being a vegetarian-friendly country. This is partially thanks to religious beliefs, but it's mostly just a personal choice there, out of respect for living beings. A State of the Nation survey in 2006 
showed that up to 31% of the Indian population is vegetarian and another 9% do eat eggs, but no forms of meat. So enjoying local cuisine isn't reserved only for meat eaters. Like I said before, this is a diverse country with enough variety to suit anybody. Do you think I forgot about you sports lovers? Well, if you love sports as much as experiencing new cultures, watching a live cricket match can be a way to enjoy both. Cricket is the most popular sport in the country, much like soccer in Europe or football in the US. So why not get your hands on a ticket to a local game, pack a picnic basket, and spend the day outdoors among locals to get a taste of true Indian sport culture. The Gandhi River provides another outdoor activity for nature lovers. While still keeping the focus on experiencing the culture, the Ganges is the longest river in India and serves as a hub of activity in this country. This includes dolphin watching. As the Ganges dolphin is unique to this river, unfortunately, their numbers are drastically decreasing due to increasing pollution. Let's hope environmentalists can find a way to protect these creatures for future generations to enjoy when visiting India. Again, you can't talk about India without mentioning one of the many massive ceremonies that take place there. One of the most popular is the Kumbha Mela gathering, which is so big that it's visible from space. Kumbha Mela is the two-month mass pilgrimage of those of Hindu faith to bathe in the Ganges. The host city of Allahabad welcomed a staggering 121 million visitors in 2013 and a whopping 30 million on a single day. Even if you're not into crowds, you should still try to buck up and witness this incredible event. I mean, at least you'll be able to say you were present at the world's largest gathering of people. Bragging rights! Kumbha Mela is one of many festivals celebrated in the Indian culture, but the brightest has to be the Color Festival Holi. It celebrates love, the start of spring, and end of winter, and the triumph of good over evil in a very delightful way. People take to the streets to drench each other in water and colored powder. Everyone celebrates together in a spectacular display of good humor and, of course, lots of color. Now, I'm not usually one for a crowd, but this just seems too good to miss. As a matter of fact, color plays a very important role in Indian culture. It's apparent from the traditional clothes, festivals, local cuisine, and even their currency. Yes, with a handful of rupees, you'll quickly see their bright colors and variations in sizes. Even if the notes designers didn't do it on purpose, they seem to symbolically celebrate the diversity of this nation. Indian bills also have braille markings so that blind people can read their values. How considerate! Another fun fact of the topic of Indian money, it's illegal for foreigners to take rupees in or out of the country. Sorry for the bad news to any of you coin collectors that like to keep different types of money as a souvenir from your travels. So yeah, not just a fun fact, but one you should take note of to avoid any trouble with local authorities. There's no limit on the amount of foreign currency you can bring with you on your visit, as long as you declare any amount over 5,000 US dollars in cash. But then again, who's carrying that kind of cash on them anyway? Now. Queen fans might be aware of this tidbit, but let's see if you are. Did you know that the iconic band's frontman, Freddie Mercury, was of Indian descent? His birth name was Farrakh Bulsara, and both of his parents were from Bombay. Mercury himself, of course, was born in Tanzania, but still. From beautiful music to beautiful people, India has the highest number of winners from the Miss World competition with a total of six. Only Venezuela has produced the same amount of title holders since the beauty pageant started in 1951. The most recent Indian Miss World was Manushi Chiller in 2017. So in addition to the delicious food and fun festivals, you'll also be in the presence of people whose beauty is recognized worldwide. If you get tired of the hustle and bustle, you could also take a day and kick back with some old school board games. You familiar with shoots and ladders? Well, this popular classic dates back to ancient Indian times and was known as Moksha Patan. It made its way to England, where it was sold as snakes and ladders. The name changed to the one we know today when it was first introduced to the US. The idea of the game 
was to teach the kids the difference between good virtues and bad vices, represented by the ladders and shoots respectively. Thanks for the good childhood memories, India. So, would you like to go to India? Let me know down in the comments.